Welcome to Dan's On Fandoms, I'm Dan. Charles Soule's Star Wars No. 6 was recently released and it was an exciting, trippy, and stellar ride. Probably my favorite issue of the series thus far. The issue delves heavily into the Force and there's a lot to digest, so let's dive into it. The issue opens on Sorelia where we left off in issue number 5 and Luke is still caught in the booby trap set by Verla. Verla laments how Vader and his Inquisitors hunted her merely because there was a sliver of a chance that she may have become a Jedi. Hope appears lost for Luke until our homeboy R2-D2 arrives, shocks Verla, drains the water in the trap, and saves Luke. After some time has passed, Verla awakens tied up and still believing that Luke wants to kill her. Luke frees her and states that he's merely Luke Skywalker and doesn't want to harm her, attempting to assuage her fears that he's come to kill her. Verla states that she knows that name, Skywalker, stating that Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker before turning to the dark side, explaining to Luke how her master, Farron Barr, told her that something happened to Anakin, turning him into a Sith Lord. I absolutely love this little tie-in here. Verla previously appeared in another Charles Soule comic, the fantastic Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith. In that series, Verla was on on Moncala, with other Jedi Padawans who were kind of like disciples of another Jedi Padawan, the aforementioned Iktochi Farron Bar. At one point in the series, Barr informs his Padawan followers that he had a slicer pull a hollow recording from the Jedi Temple on Coruscant from the Night of the Jedi Purge, where Darth Vader and the 501st stormed the Jedi Temple and killed all those within. Farron Barr explained to his Padawan followers that it was Anakin Skywalker who helped topple the Jedi in the Republic before he became Darth Vader, which is how Verla knows Darth Vader is Anakin Skywalker. I'm such a big fan of Charles Soul, and this is a perfect example why. Soul loves to connect his various Star Wars stories using easter eggs and tie-ins as he does here with Verla. Back to the issue where Luke then explains to Verla that he came to Sorelia after he had a force vision where she was offering a lightsaber to him. Verla tells Luke that she doesn't have a lightsaber for him but knows where he can get one. However, she tries to dissuade Luke from continuing down the path of a Jedi since that path brought her nothing but death and pain as most of those she was close to were killed and that she was continuously hunted by the Inquisitors and Darth Vader. Verla continues explaining that she believes the Force uses beings as pawns to its cosmic wings whims regardless of whether they're a Jedi or a Sith. But Luke isn't swayed, telling Verla that he can't sit by idly as he believes he's supposed to help since it was the Force that sent him to Sorelia to find a lightsaber. Verla agrees to tell Luke where he can find a lightsaber and even a holocron so long as Luke never returns to Sorelia or bothers Verla again, to which Luke agrees. She then tells Luke that the lightsaber he seeks can be found in an old Jedi outpost from the High Republic days, another little tie-in from Charles Soule here. However, However, she warns him that something dark looms within the walls of the Jedi Outpost. From there, Luke and R2 make their way to the Jedi Outpost in the Outer Rim on the planet Tempest. Once inside the Jedi Outpost, Luke indeed finds a lightsaber and it's the same type of saber that was used by the Jedi Temple Guards, although it's not double bladed as it appears to have been split in half. Right as Luke picks up the lightsaber, however, a familiar and unexpected being appears before him, the apparition of the Grand Inquisitor. No joke, when reading this part of the issue, I literally said aloud, get the fuck out of here. The Grand Inquisitor was the last person I envisioned to see in this issue, especially as some sort of spectral entity, but I love it. The Grand Inquisitor tells Luke who he is, that he was once a Jedi, then he hunted Jedi in service to the Emperor and Vader, and now he kills those who venture to this Jedi outpost and fall right into Darth Vader's trap. As this is happening, Commander Zara and Darth Vader are discussing the Rebel Alliance's 7th fleet. Vader is interrupted after he senses that his trap has been sprung on Tempest and order orders his pilot to set course for the Outer Rim planet. Back in the Jedi Outpost, Luke and the Grand Inquisitor duel and trade strikes with one another as the Grand Inquisitor mocks Luke and his skills. Luke tells the Dark Side Spectre that his training isn't yet complete, but being in the Jedi Outpost makes him understand what he's trying to be a part of, which is the Jedi Order. And after the Grand Inquisitor tells Luke that won't save him, Luke chops off the apparition's hand, telling the Grand Inquisitor that there are things worth fighting and dying for, which is something the Jedi understood and something that the young Jedi learner is beginning to understand too. After Luke has left with his prize, Darth Vader arrives and the Grand Inquisitor tells Vader that Luke was too strong in the Force to be stopped. The Grand Inquisitor then
then pleads with Vader and requests to be released from his nightmarish service. But the Sith Lord denies his request, telling the Grand Inquisitor that he will continue to serve the Dark Lord of the Sith. We then cut to Luke meeting up with the Rebel Alliance's 4th Division, and Luke tells Leia he found what he was looking for. Leia asks Luke to show everyone what he found with the hope that it'll help inspire the Rebel fighters, as morale is at an all-time low. Luke obliges Leia and ignites his yellow lightsaber for all aboard the Nebulon B escort frigate to see. And that's where the issue comes to an end. As mentioned earlier, I really enjoyed this issue a lot. I loved seeing Verla explain to Luke how she grew disheartened by the Force. Like those in real life who struggle with their own faith or have lost faith in their religious beliefs, we saw that with Verla. She's dismayed with the idea of predetermination or the will of the Force because she believes the will of the Force dealt her with such a crappy hand since her Jedi path was wrought with death and much sorrow. I think that's something a lot of people can relate to. It's hard for her to see how the Force's will can result in anything positive, both for her individually and galaxy-wide, but by meeting Luke and telling him about Tempest and where to find a lightsaber, she's of course helping to set in motion Luke becoming a Jedi and he and his father's defeat over the Emperor in Return of the Jedi. Furthermore, I love that Luke's determination never sways as Verla speaks her mind on the Force. At the end of Empire Strikes Back, and at the beginning of this rebooted series, we see a Luke Skywalker that is defeated defeated both literally and figuratively after his duel with Darth Vader and having learned that Vader is his father. But we're seeing here how he's working on picking himself up and getting right back in the saddle so to speak, continuing down the path of the Jedi. And we see that again when he's fighting the Grand Inquisitor. Luke says to the Grand Inquisitor that his training isn't done and that he's not yet a Jedi. As we've continued through each of these issues, Luke's confidence, will, and determination continues to grow and more and more he sees and understands the importance of the Jedi Order their beliefs and ideals, and fighting for a cause that's worth dying for. We're seeing that gap from the end of Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi being built, and I'm thoroughly enjoying seeing Luke's journey in becoming a Jedi. Also, we gotta talk about the Grand Inquisitor because holy shit balls, I wasn't expecting him to appear at all, let alone as this dark side specter of sorts that attacks Luke. When reading this for the first time, I was initially confused. I didn't know if this was an illusion of the Grand Inquisitor, like a hologram or something, but then Vader appears at the end, tells the Grand Inquisitor his service will continue, and the Grand Inquisitor utters the words we heard him say to Kanan in Star Wars Rebels right before he died, there are things worse than death. According to George Lucas, Darksiders can't be force ghosts, and it appears as if this is something different than that of a light side force ghost, such as Obi-Wan and Yoda, who are able to travel and appear more freely. The Grand Inquisitor, however, seems to be stuck in this dark side Sith purgatory or hell of sorts, which is why we see him engulfed in flames. He appears to be solely confined to the halls of this Jedi outpost on Tempest and must adhere to the orders of Darth Vader. It seems as if Darth Vader, and I'm guessing the Emperor, are the only ones that can release the Grand Inquisitor from this existence of torment because this existence is clearly tormenting the Grand Inquisitor and I'm assuming this is his punishment for failing to defeat Kanan. Aside from that, I loved getting the connectivity with Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, when Verla is telling Luke about Farron Bar, and I also love the mention of the High Republic. So yeah, a solid issue issue and I can't wait for issue 7 to drop next month. Charles Soule just continues to be one of my favorite writers in Star Wars and he never seems to disappoint. But what did you all think about Star Wars number 6 and the appearance of the Grand Inquisitor? Let us know down in the comments. Want more Star Wars content? Check out some of our other videos. Please like and subscribe and stay nerdy.